Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 3, The Adventures of Lara Croft. This is guess 115 speaking. That's it, we are thrown straight into the action without any further ado. Now, those of you who have watched my Tomb Raider 2 Let's Play know that I do not like spiders. Not at all, so of course the final villain here would turn into a spider, it just makes sense. His torso has eight eyes, he has multiple appendages, uh, large hairy legs, or... I'm not even sure we can refer to them as legs. And it's just overall one of the most disgusting creatures I have ever witnessed in my life. So our task, of course, is to do away with it. Now, the reason I have paused the game straight from the get-go is because I'd like to explain a few things first. So, unlike in the Dragon's Lair in Tomb Raider 2, instead of dealing with henchmen and then the main villain afterwards, we first deal with the villain and then a few henchmen on our way back. Now, uh, this will be, of course, a very short boss fight level. There are no secrets to be found here. We have found all the secrets in Tomb Raider 3. However, when it comes to kills, there are, including Dr. Villard, seven enemies to be killed here. However, the if you kill them all, the lowest possible number of kills you can get is 11. And I will explain why as we go further. However, there are also infinite number of kills. Yet again, you can wreck up in this level. So... Yeah, this seems to be kind of a tradition in the <laughs> in Tomb Raider 3 now. Uh, as for the items, there are just seven items to be picked up, four of which are the four pieces of meteorite to recover from this cavern. So, yeah, not many items to pick up here. So, first of all, I'd like to say that I am going to die in this level because there are a couple of things I'd like to show you. Now, in order to defeat Dr. Villard, we need to bring this piece of meteorite down. Now, he is unfortunately invincible. We can use up all our ammunition on this bastard, but we will not hurt him in any way. And if you do try and approach him, uh, just, let's say, sprinting around this ring, he will, whoopsie, turn around like the acrobatic bastard he is and start chasing you the other direction. Now, when he does catch up to you, he will just, whoa, take your health away. Now, if he does not catch up to you and you decide to run away further away from him, as long as you are within the circle, you're fine. But let's say you step over this white line here and try to pick up one of the pieces of meteorite. No, Dr. Villard conjures a magical missile, which will kill you no matter how much health you have left. I'm not entirely sure how this is explained via the evolution, not magic angle in Tomb Raider 3, but there you have it. So, our task is to collect the four pieces of the meteorite and then make Dr. Villard once again vulnerable and finish him off. Now, in order to do that, we have uh, quite a little game to play with him. Uh, let me show you. So, first of all, let's equip our rocket launcher. We've been saving some of the rockets uh, for better use. Leave the grain launcher alone. It does not have the sufficient range, as you've seen on me fighting the Apex Mutants in the previous level. Instead, rocket launcher will do really well. Let's step into the ring, not step outside of the white line. And, yeah, if you are static and not moving, Lara removes the rockets very quickly. Now... I tend to fire three rockets and then shoot him once with the Desert Eagle. If you look at the kills count now, we have one kill. We have not in fact killed Dr. Villard, we have merely stunned him. Each time you stun him, you will be awarded one kill. If you were to stun him with a rocket or a grenade, of course the explosive weapon glitch would trigger and you could get two to three kills on this day, which would completely mess up our kill count beyond recognition. So, I will be shooting those rockets and I'll try to deliver the stunning blow with the Desert Eagle. So, now that he is stunned, you can actually tell by Lara promptly stopping to aim at him and also this little falling dizzy animation that he shows when he is stunned, you can use this opportunity to pick up an artifact and then get back into the ring quickly before he starts conjuring up another magic missile which will annihilate you no matter how much life you have left. Now let's put some, let's say, more distance between us. Okay, and let's sprint. Lara, sprint, sprint pretty please. This is actually pretty damn dangerous because he is rather close to where we entered the shrine. And as you are making circles around this pit, uh, always make a note of how many you have already picked up and which ones are remaining. I mean, you can see them kind of glowing in the distance, which is always helpful. Okay, I think we have two more to go. Okay, 
As I said, when Lara stops aiming, it means he is successfully stunned. Now, this is what I meant by there being a possible infinite kill count in this level that you can rack up, depending on how how many times you decide to stun him, that's how many kills you can get with this stun. All that it takes is one shot from Desert Eagle, but let's align ourselves correctly to that final shrine with the final piece of meteorite. Good, he is stunned. Let's pick it up. Okay, awesome, Lara. Please, pick it up, Lara. We do not have much time. There it is. Now, we have all the pieces of meteorite in Inventor Ring. We have the Infada Stone, the Element 115, the name glitch still applies in the PC version, Iovisis, and the Aura Data. So with these, the main meteorite is falling down into the center of the cavern, which is a good sign. It means Dr. Villard is vulnerable. Now, we have ran out of the rockets, so I will try to use the Desert Eagle to bring him down and also get a closer look at the bastard. <laughs> there you are, you ugly thing. And just like that, poof, he disappears. His shadow lingers as an obstacle, but then that disappears as well. And now with that, we have five kills for one boss. I guess this, this is a little apology for having zero kills for Sophia Ali in the city level. <laughs> Hard to say, but yeah. So really, that's it for the boss fights. We have finally recovered the pieces of Meteorite. The Meteorite itself disappeared, so I guess this means Lara saved the world yet again and no one can ever re-trigger it. And she'll get to bring these pretty trinkets home, which is pretty much the real motivation behind everything Lara does, to bring pretty trinkets home, at least in the core era games, before the games started to take themselves very seriously. So yeah, <laughs> mission accomplished, awesome. So really, once you get used to this, it's really not a difficult boss fight, but I can imagine how it can frustrate and confused, uh, confuse people new to this whole situation. And yes, whilst this doesn't look climbable, it's the only way to continue. Uh, our task right now is to actually climb on top of this shrine. And actually, this whole cavern is the same one that the Darvis, Darwin sailors ended up in that cutscene after the India levels. Where they encountered the wolf pack. Uh, it looks, of course, as it does in these games, completely different. However, uh, this is well. These are the shrines where they recovered all four artifacts from. So yeah, Villard really just put them in their rustic place and activated the meteorite. I kind of wonder what would happen if the sailors themselves were to activate the meteorite, if they had any idea what it does. According to what Villard said, the Polyne well, the ancestors of Polynesians who lived here had no idea either. So. Him being a scientist and a very evil person probably knew exactly what to do. It seems like all the evil people have some book on doing evil things, a manual. And yeah, this leads to the city of Tinos, where we actually slid down from. Uh, the cutscene you've seen at the beginning is actually the ending cutscene of the lost city of Tinos, but I just thought it'd be more appropriate to put it here, because it feels kind of strange to, you know, reveal the boss and then have the statistic screen of the previous level. Ah, I don't like that kind of pacing. But yeah, the only way is up, so we will, for the very last time, actually, monkey swing across. Well, it's not the last level, there is still, of course, the bonus level that is we need to complete. That is, if we found all the secrets in Tomb Raider 3, which we did indeed. Okay, looks safe to let go, and now... <laughs> ah, vertigo music one final time. Such a welcoming change. And actually, I do have to admire the fact that they finally bothered with putting the lava textures in here. Why they couldn't do this in the city of Tinos, I truly have no idea. I wish they would. Oh well. Okay, and up, up, up. Aha, yes, signs of civilization. We see some artificial metal structure and a red light. So yeah, uh, RX Tech definitely has its presence here, and this is kind of what I meant by encountering the henchmen after the main boss. Uh, the henchmen, uh, yeah, we will encounter more RX Tech researchers, and actually a whole new type of enemy, which is kind of something to look out for all the time. Whoa, we can do somersaults on a slippery slope, I really had no idea to be honest. Huh, awesome. Okay, let's keep going forward. And now, Lara, put that Desert Eagle to good use. Waste no time. Oh, 
here they are. Now these are the new enemies I've been talking about. They look just like the guys holding a flamethrower in RX Tech Mines, except that they hold what I think are the MP5 submachine guns, the same the soldiers in Area 51 used. Yeah. So these are your standard assault rifle kind of enemies. One drops a large health pack, the other drops uh, Desert Eagle clips. I really don't see the point this late in the game, but I guess they wanted to make sure you have some ammunition to make it through, but hopefully we can make it through even with our pistols at this spot. Watch out, flamethrower guy, and there's another one, but do let him finish his run, because he activates a button, which will open a door into a room with two new enemies. A flamethrower wielding guy, and apparently very vengeful crazy assault rifle. So yeah, if you were to shoot this guy before he would reach this door, uh, this door would never open because the button over here, whether the door is opened or closed, does absolutely nothing. So only only way to trigger these two guys and, well, rather disappointing empty room is to make sure he manages to finish his run. And on top of that he also drops nothing. However, there was a guy holding a flamethrower over here. Yep. And uh, one of the first two assault rifles both actually drop more Desert Eagle shots. Once again, kind of pointless this late in the game, but look at it. We were really try to, trying to preserve it. We wasted so much ammunition on the wasps, and still after the main boss fight, we have 76 shots left. I think that is absolutely amazing. So, really, now we have a proof that this game really is ammunition generous. I mean, after all, our playthrough was with the no pistol challenge from a certain stage in the game and oh my god there is our way out flying above us let's stop by the chain link fence we have to wait for this helicopter to descend that is our way out once it does descend the gate will open and we will finish the very last level of tomb raider 3 so i think this is actually a good point to look at the statistics because what we'll see afterwards will be the overall game final statistics view, not just for this level. So, no secrets in this level, 11 kills, just as I said, the minimum if you kill all 7 enemies, because 5 for Villard. And we have found all 7 items. Now, there's also our accuracy score, we have used no health packs, overall good performance. Now, let's see what happens when the helicopter descends. <laughs> I am so looking forward to the cutscene over here. I believe it was 1999 when we
we had our first computer. I think I was five years old and Tomb Raider 3 was my very first experience with three-dimensional exploration. The most sadistic Tomb Raider and it was the first one I was ever exposed to. You can imagine how intimidating it was for me as a child. And whew, 17 to 18 years later I have finally dominated the game, discovered every item, enemy, secret, every nook and cranny searched. I cannot even describe what it feels like to dominate a game that has been haunting me for years upon years. It's really indescribable. And I absolutely love how instead of a generic explosion uh, exit like in Tomb Raider 1 and Tomb Raider 2, they went for a whole helicopter chase this time. I mean, these were 1990s, yeah? So, power to the metal. <laughs> you know, there was nothing was the pinnacle of entertainment as much as explosions. I mean, this was the Die Hard era, that kind of thing. So, it really suits the time when the game was released. It, just absolutely perfect. As for the final statistics themselves, now what we see here is the time taken off. Um, of course, the time will differ with the length of individual videos and stuff like that. And I have had to replay, I think, uh, the Temple Ruins and the Area 51 due to some technical difficulties. So that will differ, of course, as well. But this just shows the clean time, how long it took me to go through the game. Some parts that I have repeated after death were, of course, faster than with all the com commentary. So that, of course, is taken into consideration. But overall, almost 14 hours, which, you know, is for someone who knows where to go, what to do, that kind of thing. So it really is a longer game. Now, we have found 60 out of 59 secrets. This is because of the coastal village having four out of three secrets. Not sure if this was an intentional one secret pardon to still be able to unlock a bonus level or I think honestly it was just an oversight. Then there are 543 kills. We have used 6079 shots from all weapons combined. We have actually managed to land a hit with 5622 of them. Over the course of the entire adventure we have used 11 health packs. Oh well we have replenished our health bar with a value of 11 full health bars. And we have traveled the distance of 67.46 kilometers. One meter, I believe, is one in-game square in the engine. So, really, this is just a very short, brief final statistic window. It also doesn't show you anything about the items we have picked up and so on. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> this statistic screen was not at all present in Tomb Raider 1, which is kind of what made me start with the whole statistics videos in the first place. So you can definitely look forward to me making a final statistics video for Tomb Raider 3, uh, which I will do after I will finish the bonus level. Yes, indeed, do not despair, there is still one, well, albeit short, but very nice, lovely level ahead of us. So thank you very much guys for being with me on this amazing journey and I will see you next time in All Hollows.